Um, hello and welcome uh, to this uh, session today. I'm going to speak up a little bit because uh, we have some music uh, around. Uh, I'm going to ask that uh, of you as well. Um, thanks for, uh, for coming. We will uh, talk today about the role of arts and culture in the new European Bauhaus. Um, so the, the core principles of the new European Bauhaus are sustainability, inclusion and beauty. And especially like these terms beauty, aesthetics, uh, there is a role for the arts to play here in shaping the future of Europe. Um, this session will be uh, recorded. I hope uh, there are people at home uh, watching this live or maybe later. Um, the session is organized by the Creative Europe desks. I, my name is Albert Meyer. I am an advisor for the Creative Europe desk in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm joined here today uh, by these three uh, wonderful panelists. Um, first, we have uh, Bruno Inacio. Uh, thank you, Bruno, for coming on Portuguese National Day, uh, yes. I've heard. Um, Bruno is the head of the cultural department at the municipality of Faro uh, and a project leader for the European Creative Rooftop Network, which is a, a, a project supported by Creative Europe. He's a former member of Parliament, an assumed bold man, Yes, I am. Uh, and he doesn't know how to swim. Thank it's you. That's also true. Um, I'll first introduce all three of you, and then we can go into your projects. Uh, next, we have uh, <laughs> Gabriele Rosana. He is the policy director at Culture Action Europe. Um, and Gabriele is one of the people that uh, kind of pushed us to be here today because Culture Action Europe has published a position paper on the role of art and culture within the new European Bauhaus initiatives. Um, Gabriele lives here in Brussels and he tweets a lot, as I have read. And finally we have Fran Quiroga, uh, who is a transdisciplinary research researcher, a mediator uh, and an artist. And he works for Concomitentes, which is a new European Bauhaus partner. Um, he's also known as uh, the queen of the Anthropocene. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Fran, I'm going to uh, uh, start with you. You have a short presentation on um, Concomitentes. Yes, this is Concomitentes, where I work. Concomitentes is, a, this is the Spanish note of a network that is called uh, Nova Commanditaire in France, and the new patrons are, we are in Spain, Italy, Germany, and, and Switzerland, and Belgium as well. And then, this is an artistic producer, we are artistic producer, and uh, we follow um, a protocol, was, uh, a protocol who, uh, what was invented by artistic uh, François Herz. And then François Herz in, 19, in 1990 said that uh, we need to democrat, dem, uh, democratize um, artistic, artistic process. Not only artistics say what they want to do, it's more the community, what the side have the community and try to do a artistic uh, device or artistic uh, piece of art according to um, the side of this community. And then uh, now we have more, more than 500 workers art, art in Europe and in, in our case in Spain, we are working in this, in this well, in my case, I work in Betanzos, in Galicia, in a park, in another, in another, in another part of Spain, they are working in, with, um, with NURS, in a library, in the University of Madrid, and uh, with people with disabled, with disabled people in, in Barcelona. But uh, current, we have a, a strategy, a strategic plan for this year. And the idea is try to be um, an institution um, focused on participatory process and uh, sustainability process. And why we are uh, focusing on the idea of um, uh, sustainability, uh, sustainability question? Because we think that the, in art, 
we have the powerful or we have power about trying to create uh, agency, agency for communities, you know, powerful for communities. And then this is the try to generate, generate citizen, citizen agency. We are, we are more, more than creator of piece of art. We have, um, we have community, or at least we can try to uh, increase or power the, the community. Because we have, we have the buys. We are not, we are, art actually, or uh, currently, we are more than a piece of art. We create a process, we create methodologies, we create device. And then I think that this, this is important for this discussion, discussion because when we think the idea of, of sustainability is not only technical or engineering question, because the people are involved uh, in sustainability question. And Okay, maybe not now, but um, time ago or 100 years ago, the community wa uh, was involved uh, doing sustainability of, of, of their countries, their land, you know. And then what we can do? Try to create or try to uh, do the buys to involve again the community to think or do, th or do things to try to solve Challenge, environmental challenge in every in every country or every land or village, you know. And then I think that this we have uh, we have this power, the artists, the artists uh, world. And according to the EPCCC uh, panel, no, they say that the if we don't if we don't involve the people in management, the sustainability, they are going to have problems. These communities because they are not going to. No, they, you know, they're going to explore the risk. Uh, and then this is the reason why we need to create more inclusive societies and then art has the power there. And then this is the reason why we focus in sustainability, more, more sustainability and the beauty is sustainability as well. Because the ideas at the end is not, we, are, we have more than piece of art, you know? And then I think that we, if we can focus or learn um, about the methodologies, uh, rules, how community uh, self-management or, you know, and then I think that the art can use body or another language or imagine to try to increase the way to solve the environmental challenge. And then this is the idea. I think that's, that's very much in line with what the new European Bauhaus does. How does that work in practice for a concomitentist? Because yeah. you, you mediate between a community and an artist. Yes. Is there, is there, does it always go smooth? Is this a, a smooth <laughs> uh, bottom-up uh, approach? Is there friction? Yes. Uh, can you give us some examples of projects? Well, no, you can, you can tell us <laughs> some projects because this is the, 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 no, but. I have, yes, 20 years of experience here in, uh, in Belgium. In Belgium. It's not all smooth, but it's a it's a process. And I think in the process they learn a lot about art and we show and then every time they say something, the next time we come back and we show artists and artwork. So it's like they they are bringing things in without knowing the artist. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of, then we can make a choice for an artist. But not in a way you have seven artists. No, it's, it's a process. Yes. They tell about their problems or their. Um, uh, but because when you are talking about sustainability, it's like there are problems, but they are also quite proud about something. You know, like community who was fair, was uh, flowering under hundred years ago, and then there is industrial decline, and they don't have work anymore. So they have this idea that they are. They are not proud because they are without work. So then you have, then, then it's like you're going to talk about that. No, you have to talk about what was the beautiful, some beautiful buildings that are still there. But yes, the land, we can't use the land anymore. That's a problem. But then you don't talk only about the problem. And then you take them with, and then they are proud and they like to talk about it. Thank you. I'm going to summarize a little bit for the people watching at home. We all have small microphones, uh, so I'm very happy with audience involvement and questions, but I'll have to repeat everything you said for the then people I at home. I can see if I, if I 
I said it in the right Exactly. <laughs> so you, we have a, a, what is your name? Teresa. Uh, Teresa from Belgium, uh, who said there is friction uh, when working with, uh, with communities. Uh, there are these issues, but it's always a process to involve communities, artists in these, uh, in these projects. Um, Fran uh, Concomitantes is a new European Bauhaus uh, partner. Uh, the same uh, is uh, Culture Action Europe is also an official partner of the new European Bauhaus. Um, Fran, first you, what does, what does that mean in your case? What is the meaning of European, the new European Bauhaus? The, the, your, your function as a partner. No, I, we are cu curious about the, um, the future of this initiative because the, it seems, it seems interest, you know, beauty, sustainability, but maybe we are more curious than we have security, the, the way of, of this initiative. But I think that is a good way to try to create this mix between beauty and sustainability. But more according more than uh, community process, participatory methodologies, you know, this I think that this is, we have to focus on that. And I think that this, this is the, the, the um, for us, for, for the cultural workers, what, what we can do, you know? And I think that this is, for me, this is the question what, uh, what, I, what I ask. What we can do in the world for the, the cultural workers? Okay, we can do imagine, imaginaries, but, okay, or imaginaries or ethics, but we can do something else more. And then this is the, the question, what we have to focus, not the device or the methodologies to try to get involved the community in this challenge. No, and I think that this is what, what we want to focus. Good. Um, Gabriele, uh, Culture Action Europe also is a partner, uh, but maybe from a, a, a different position. Can you tell me what that partnership looks, what that looks like for you? Well, uh, let's be at the table, not to be on the menu, if I can summarize it that way. No, I'm joking, and of course we have brilliant, I mean, we are based in Brussels, we have brilliant relationships with the, with the European institutions and we have been monitoring and participating in the process since its very inception. But Culture Action Europe is, for those who do not know it, the major European cross-sectorial cultural network. So we, our membership is, may, is, bay, is made itself of other European networks, but also organizations, policy makers, individuals, um, public administration. So we try to really reflect the diversity of the European landscape and to follow everything that uh, is cooked in the Brussels kitchen that can be relevant for culture. So of course, when uh, during the State of the Union speech of 2020, President von der Leyen mentioned for the first time ever the new European Bauhaus as a movement, well, a grassroots movement that in any case, its inception was Rather top down, we were interested in the um, in the bottom up part and in the engagement of the cultural community, as Fran was also saying before. So we have been monitoring since the beginning, and being Culture Action Europe, a community itself, we have wanted to make that um, the the way we have engaged with the European Bauhaus a participatory exercise in itself. So in different moments in the past year and a half, we have engaged our uh, membership and listen from them, listen not only uh, the hopes about the new European Bauhaus, but also the concerns. I mean, this is a festival, we are celebrating the new European Bauhaus. I cannot hide if I listen really to my membership, to our membership, that some are practitioners are worried that the initiative doesn't appeal to them, they're not reflected. So we wanted to facilitate also the dialogue between the political world and the cultural community. That's how the position paper of Culture Action Europe that I'm glad and thank you again to the Creative Europe desks for using that as a um, trigger for today's discussion. That is how it comes into play. But we tried, I mean, really to listen to our membership and to propose a few inputs for the way forward, because culture is clearly there, but probably can be made more visible. Because there's 15 points in your position <laughs> yeah. paper. Uh, we only have a session of 45 minutes uh, uh, today, so we can go through all 15 of them, but you also have prepared a small presentation summing yeah. them up, right? Yes, trying to sum a bit the, um, them up. 
But probably before saying that, yesterday, as probably many of you, at least those who are based in Brussels, uh, uh, I was reading through the playbook newsletter of Politico that was advertising the um, uh, new European Bauhaus Festival. Uh, and I mean, I did play that game of where's Wally, where's Waldo, that depends on the language you use, but uh, I couldn't spot culture there. There was everything, urban planners, environmental activists, but culture was not there. I'm not saying it's not in the new European Bauhaus, but it's not in the, probably in the social perception of what the new European Bauhaus is. So there is work to be uh, done in that sense, not only from the side of the institutions that are behind the initiative, but also from the side of the community that really is engaging with the initiative. And as I'm speaking of it, I think for us, first and foremost, trying to summarize already three points of the policy recommendations, putting people first is the first policy recommendation. Of course, the first thing you have in mind when you're speaking of the new European Bauhaus are buildings. Uh, the idea for us is also to shift from uh, places to from um, places to spaces and to shift also the narrative from the buildings to the people that inhabit actually buildings and public spaces. Mm -hmm. Public spaces, since the very beginning, has been it's very clear that is also one of the key features of the new European Bauhaus. But having the people um, there and having the artists and the cultural community politically involved, as we are speaking of political of um, climate emergency, but also social emergencies, um, is, is key for us. And when we speak of sustainability, of course, when one thinks of the new European Bauhaus, thinks of the environmental sustainability at first. I think there is, and, and I mean, inclusiveness is one of the key buzzwords of the new European Bauhaus. I think it's important also looking at it from the cultural perspective to bear in mind the need of a full-fledged sustainability that also thinks of the sustainability of the cultural practice, sustainability of the cultural sector itself, sustainability of the cultural work. Culture Action Europe works a lot uh, and is really trying to influence the EU agenda on the topic of the working conditions of artists. And I think that really urgently needs to be linked to such a, um, uh, such a prominent initiative as the new European Bauhaus. Unfortunately, and that is reflected in one of the points of the paper, too much have we seen that the new European Bauhaus uh, has been appealing for call for ideas. Let's say um, some sort of free works from those who can afford it, especially because probably they are not that advanced in their professional career. So those for us are critical features that for the future could be a bit uh, revisited. But enough for the criticism. I think there is one main feature of the new European Bauhaus that really is uh, central for us. It is the cross-sectoriality potential. I said before, Culture Action Europe is a cross-sectorial cultural network working with all practices in culture uh, and also outside the cultural feed and the cultural environment. The way that the new European Bauhaus is wants to put in dialogue arts and technology, arts and innovation, culture and innovation, places, uh, way of living, places of living is, um, is fundamental for us and there is a lot uh, of work to, to be done there. In order for that to be done, there is this need of recognition of culture as a uh, fully uh, associated, let's say, partner of the new European Bauhaus. Events like this are of course delivering that message. We from our side are trying to bring that message to the ground, to the cultural operators we work with. But it's true that some of them still are a bit cautious when it comes to uh, the initiative that probably still speaks too much about the buildings and less, for example, of intangible cultural uh, practices or ways of engaging communities, although the potential is there and just needs to be unlocked. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think that is something that we re recognize as Creative Europe desks, the artists and cultural organizations we talk to that are, we also talk to design uh, and architecture fields, heritage, that already have a maybe a more of a connection automatically to the new European Bauhaus, uh, but there is much potential in the in the rest of the arts. Um, I'm going to continue. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get back to involving uh, artists uh, in um, in in sustainability. Um, but maybe a question for all of you is: Should artists be the ones solving the climate crisis? Should they should they envision the new 
uh, Europe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if artists can solve the climate crisis because sometimes it's like um, the artists or culture we are not we are we are not engineering and then we are we are not going to solve the questions but at least we can ask questions and I think that this is important because the focus the what is the question what is the point and then for, because now we have one this is the this is the the. Money. The most challenge that we have now, no? the climate crisis. And then, time ago, the solution were always about technology or techno, techno, uh, the technophilia questions. No? But this is a mistake. And then we saw that this is a mistake because we have the community and people doing things and trying to solve the questions. And then this is the unique way what we have to do to try to solve or try to do something about that, not only the elite people or the academic or, you know, and then I think that is what we can do. I mean, for sure, we're speaking of uh, political agents. So I think that precisely they should, political agents who are good at asking questions, as Fran said, so that would be also my, my answer. So we really need to have them more prominently involved in, uh, facing whatever crisis, whatever emergency uh, in the future, but starting with indeed the climate, uh, the climate emergency. That is one indeed of our, I would say, not only when it comes to the new European Bauhaus, but in general, what we ask to the policymakers is having also the cultural stakeholders at the table, because we don't want, well, it's always complex, I must say, when uh, trying to deliver this message to the policymakers. But at Culture Action Europe, and I believe at, in the cultural ecosystem at large, culture is perceived both, both as a sector and as a vector. That's actually the um, uh, slogan that we like to use, both as a sector and as a dimension, a dimension for, of course, sustainable development. So when we speak of cultural work, of course, we have in mind the cultural sector, but then Let's say, probably culture is not everything, but it crosses everything. And the way it crosses everything, the way it is so much about the societies and the citizens, mm -hmm. the communities and the individuals, then you really need it for having also a more overarching perspective on the, on the problems, having more questions, more complex questions, uh, bringing the conversation at a different, probably also level of complexity, and then finding together, co-creating uh, solutions. So that would be for us indeed the answers. Culture it crosses all other fields. It's not cannot just be uh, dealt with by as it was I don't know transport, which is a sector of the employment. It is also a sector of the employment. It is much more than that. And that's always how we unfortunately have to start our pitches to the institutions. Of course, when we do not speak with our culture friends from the cultural. Um, DGs that know very well that, but when you try to speak to others, you always have, and I think culture is the only sector that has to justify why it is saying something. So we always have that justification paragraph why culture is important. Yeah. Well, I think everyone, it's everyone's role to, on climate change, I think saying it's artists or politicians or communities, I think everyone has a role on this. I think artists were, since ever, were in the in the front role of calling for action and, and trying to raise attention to, to the problems. But, uh, but, um, but listening to actually what you were saying and, and also to the document um, that, that you produced, that, that, that I think that for some time there was always this idea that for the artistic sector to, to get some really supportive uh, funds from Europe, you had to look at these big agendas of the green agenda or to the digital agenda. So artists always say, oh, we have to do a project with the green thing to get some funding for our project. Oh, but now it's about the digital. Now let's think about something about digital to have some funding on this. Well, and uh, I think the, 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 the document is really interesting because also he points out this idea that, I don't know, if, is it Bauhaus, this, the solution for this idea that is, is the artist, artistic expression uh, now to have, is going to now to have a, a, the freedom to go without having to put a stamp on, okay, I'm a green artist, I'm a digital artist. 
you know, uh, and I'm just making a question. I, I don't know the answer, but I feel I'm, I'm from a local authority. I'm not an artist, um, but I, I hear this from the people. And I was just came from a debate with, uh, with Walter Zampieri from the agency. And I was talking about this and he was saying, yeah, but also Creative Europe is more and more supporting transdisciplinary projects. And, um, and yeah, I can say this because we have a project that it's leaking, it's, it's connecting water tubes, tubes with artists. So it's a bit strange uh, thing to do, but um, I hope that with the Bauhaus, uh, we could uh, have like a new road that the creative sector can go ahead and, and not always trying to look for a stamp for what they are doing it. What, why and what they are doing. Precisely on that, if I can add one thing, fully agree with, um, with Bruno, what Bruno said. Uh, when listening to several other cultural uh, networks, for example, the fear was that there is another, yet another box to be ticked in the application process. And that is something that also, I think the Creative Europe desks uh, do hear from those who operate on the field. So many have worked already for years on topics of sustainability. The NEB should not be the mold to fit in on the one hand and should not be an extra burden when it comes also to the application processes. So we really need to leave the space for the creators to create with other putting much bureaucratic constraint over there. I think very often these, these overarching European programs like Creative Europe, like the new European Bauhaus, uh, are not, not always artists are aware even of these, uh, these structures, right? And we're, we're lucky to have an artist on our panel today. Um, do artists talk about these uh, these these programs do they do they have opinions on the new European Bauhaus? Do you do you, do you know? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. No, because maybe we are working more than than try to uh, work ourselves. You know, no, because the precarity of the you know, the wall of artists, no, it's not uh, not easy or they can't do and try to think another questions, not like that. But I think that we have to focus on how we can involve more artists in this process. I think that is important, you know, because they, I think that they can, they can um, uh, change the framework or the physical framework, not like um, no, the, the life, sometimes you think that the life is that, but artists, no, they can't open this, this framework, no, and then they can use the body or they can increase the, our imagination, and then this is powerful, and then this, this is a pity if we don't use this, the, the body, the powerful of the body, you know, and then, this is like uh, because at the end the life is so bored, and then they try to they try no the, the the happiness of the life or the power not not only co the color no but a lot of things no try to dance try to see the ways in another way or and then this is a uh, this is beauty this is beauty and then this is a pity we don't use that to try solve this kind of question because it's, it's complex but and then why we are not going to use this, no? But can, can I just add something? I was in Seville uh, a month ago in a um, urban innovative action uh, meeting, which is a program also. And at, uh, at some time there was an official from the, the program saying, the new uh, urban innovation action will, will have se several changes and will take into account, and it, it will be very important, the, U the new European Bauhaus objectives. And everyone was looking to each other. Oh damn! Right. What's that now? So, uh, and don't get me wrong. I really like the idea that we. Could, it's hard to explain the Bauhaus because, and that's one of the things that I was telling people in my city and the artists. I'm going to the Bauhaus festival. I said, "What is that?" And then I tried like five minutes to explain it and say it's a movement, but then it's this, but then yeah. it's not this. And you say, "Ah, but it's a like a financial problem." Well, no, no, but not yet, but, but maybe, it's building, no. but maybe. It's so, maybe. so it's hard to explain, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really bad that it's hard to explain. It has to evolve to something because 
and this idea also, oh, let's create a movement. And someone decides that in a speech. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I think that's good that they created, but it was decided in a speech, let's create a movement. It's usually not, does it work like this? So usually <laughs> movements come out from society, from yeah. people that are wanting things to change or to do something. But now we're doing it the opposite. So I, think, I really think that involving the networks that you are talking about, we have to bring these people together and, no. and let's see how, how where, where does it clash somehow. Maybe we, we only have a few minutes left, so maybe time for a final question. If we uh, talk about the evolvement of this, this let's say, top-down movement or bottom-up approach uh, where they meet, how would you like to see it flesh out? <laughs> Any of you? <laughs> no, how? No, can you repeat the question, please? So, um, um, if if we are still in this this process of forming the movement, forming the new European Bauhaus, you say that there's a there's a role for artists to play here, but it's mm. it's still a little bit unclear. Mm. How, in your mind, would that if if we continue this 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 movement, what do you think uh, should be the best solution to create to connect artists and the cultural sector? to the new European Bauhaus? I'm not sure the answer. At least now try to put maybe more no, more in the community. No, the level, the, no, the level, no, no. Uh, the sea, no, not up, you know, more in some communities, place, squares, you know, um, como se dice? Um, bajar, la, bajar la mirada. The, The, no, yeah, not in la, no, no, not in a large scale, you know, because That's sometimes like as, because at the end, no, the, 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 the idea of sustainability, no, and the idea of the, of, uh, as well, the feminists, um, we have to uh, get uh, overcome the idea of monumentalism, the epic, um, the patriarchy, at least the monumental, the monumental art, a lot of time is patriarchal. And then how we come to uh, put the, the force in the, the small, the minimum, you know, and then this is the, this is more, this is the answer. And then this is a lot of the crowd of minimum things um no they are changing with networks and then they are going to do something in the future with you know because they are in the you know the in the la tierra no yeah, roots, yes in the roots you know they have the feet in the yes. earth and then this yeah. is this is power because at the end if we put in this area no it's like okay Okay, if you have money now, it's okay because you can no, uh, share money for the rest of institutions. But at the end, if you want to do something no, po with power, uh, this is the, the idea. But okay, we need time, you know, and sometimes it's, it's complicated, you know, but... Yeah, I, I, I think I really uh, think that the document, I like this, there's a point, as point number eight. It could be the outcome that you were looking at. It's not my document, so I'm going <laughs> just to read it. The NEB should create and support the frame for transsectorial dialogues between knowledge silos, enhancing transdisciplinary research and innovation among arts, humanity, science, technology, and urbanism, and between them and society. I, I really think that this is a, re a really interesting outcome. And uh, uh, doing this without creating another silo Uh, which I know that is not easy because then it starts, okay, but how can we do it? Which is the agency that is going to rule it? Who is going to give the money? Who's going to control it? Who's going to do the timesheets and all of the invoices and all of that, you know? Mm. But um, yeah, we have to risk it and, and let it flow. Let's see where it comes in into different silos and, 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 and if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But uh, uh, I just hope that it doesn't transform into a new big thing, which is uh, the new Bauhaus, and then you can say the artist, oh, get out of the green and digital and come to this no. one now, yeah. because this is the new big thing. Let it spread around. No. I will pick up points from yeah. both, actually, because one of the... Thanks for uh, the publicity <laughs> and the advertisement on the paper, by the way. <laughs> But one of the main concerns that we get from our members, being them big networks, so that what also they get from their own members is that many of the calls of the European institutions do not reach to the sector. Mm. So as Fran was saying, or whenever they do, they are never 
especially if we look at the horizon, of course, are thought for huge institutions, mm -hmm. they are not fit for the small cultural player. Yeah. So we should, I mean, with the horizon being at least until 2027, the major envelope funding the new European Bauhaus, we should be aware that it does not prevent precisely the small players, the, the individual artists mm. to be part of the, of the new European Bauhaus. In that sense, the idea that is floating in the commission of uh, um, also creating some NEB residencies, I would say it's also an interesting way to go, especially if those are long-term residencies where uh, the, the, the artist is put in dialogue with innovators, with technology experts and so on. Um, and the other thing is, well, one sm swallow does not make a summer, I would say, especially here in Belgium, where I probably have not seen a swallow for a long time, but, uh, well, I'm, summer. well, but I'm, I'm, I'm from, uh, but I'm from Sicily, so originally, so I used to, <laughs> to see many of them. So one swallow doesn't make a summer, but of, already here we have listened to two projects that very well um, um, embody the values of the new European Bauhaus. Mm. So I think that also, um, there is some work already that has been done, maybe even before the new European Bauhaus came into existence. So I'm not saying that we need to reinvent the wheel and sing it from a Brussels-based organization that works a lot on policy. I think we already have here a clear indication on the way to go. We just need more of those uh, projects, more involvement of communities, mm -hmm. more looking at the cities from other perspectives. Maybe that's a good call to action to, to finish off with uh, for the movement. Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, maybe also from the Creative Europe desk perspective, if there's anybody who wants to connect to the New European Bauhaus through culture and is looking for funding, uh, connect to us and we can see what we can do for you. Um, for now, I want to thank all uh, three of you, uh, Bruno, Gabriele uh, and Fran. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming to, you. to Brussels and to, uh, to talk about uh, arts, culture, and a new European Bauhaus. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for the people at home uh, uh, looking as well. Um, thanks to the New European Bauhaus Festival for hosting us. And thank you for my colleagues as well for, of the Creative Europe desks for organizing this. Thank you very much. Thank you.